be boom If I were a wealthy man I wouldn't have to work hard That the rich don't work hard was certainly true back when poor Tevye from the Fiddle on the Roof complained about his lot in life. It's just as true today if hard work is understood as physically demanding labor. But if by hard we mean the amount a person's time is spent working, there's been a fundamental shift. In the generations of our great-grandparents and before, the ultimate sign of honor dignity and high status was not having to work. In the eyes of the aristocracy, productive labor was seen as disreputable. What really differentiated them from the common riffraff was eccentric leisure activities like horse racing, trophy hunting or art collecting. The only chance of someone ever acquiring such high status was by inheriting it from their wealthy parents. Most will agree that it's an improvement this is no longer the case, as it's now possible, albeit difficult, to move up the social ladder through productive work. Since the mid-century, the work hours of the so-called elites have steadily increased. The economist Daniel Markiewicz points out that 60% of high-income earners work more than 50 hours per week. Around 10% of them spend over 80 hours working. What was once referred to as the leisure class has almost entirely disappeared and is replaced with a class of high-performing workaholics. Today, it's considered worthy of much respect if someone has their calendar filled to the brim with projects, deadlines and business meetings with barely any free time in between. It's no wonder that billionaires the likes of Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have vowed to give 99% of their wealth to charity instead of their kids. Do these billionaires not love their children? The answer is simply that the norms around status and honor have changed, such that they wouldn't be doing them much good by simply giving them their wealth. We don't consider someone honorable who does nothing but live off their parents' inheritance. A system in which people can rise as far as their talents take them seems like an indisputable good. The ideal society is assumed to be one that rewards people's achievements instead of rewarding the luck of being born into a wealthy family. We vote for politicians who most believably promise to bring us a little closer to a true meritocracy. We consider deviations from that ideal, like corruption, nepotism and classism, as the quintessence of injustice. What the philosopher Michael Sandel points out is that even if we achieved a perfect meritocracy, perfect equality of opportunity, this would hardly be a just and fair society. He argues that the ideal itself is flawed. How is it fair that some people who, on top of being lucky to be born with a certain level of intelligence or talent, are rewarded with so much material gain? Nobody chooses their parents, their genes, or the kinds of brains they develop. If all obstacles to achieving success are gone, the people who never achieved it are viewed to be deserving of their lot in life. It's their own personal failure, with nobody else to blame. The elites in such a society feel a greater entitlement and less sympathy for the poor, because they can claim they really did it themselves and that a person's wealth is an indication of their moral worth or lack thereof. Also, what is considered as having merit in a society is subject to great change and not a person's own doing. Somebody like LeBron James, who made it from the streets of Akron, Ohio to international superstardom, didn't choose to be born into a society that values his particular skill. Were he not born in the 1980s, but instead in the 1880s, when basketball hadn't yet been invented, it's unlikely he would have become the top earner that he is. So on top of the luck of being talented, it's luck that there's a fit between a person's talent and what the market places a high value on. So upon looking closely, it can't be argued that even the most quote-unquote self-made man really morally deserves his riches more than somebody without the traits that society happens to attach great importance to. Mm -hmm.